Hello and welcome to this video in which we'll be looking at the Master 128 computer by Acorn Computers for the BBC. The BBC Master 128 was released in 1986, that's when I was two years old. It features 128K of RAM as standard, that's kilobytes, not megabytes. And it uses a 65SC12 CPU based on 6502 CPU as used in the NES, Commodore 64 and so on. So as typical of the time, they had built-in keyboard. This has quite nice keys, very clunky. A numeric keypad also. See the master logo, the L logo, master again. Got three lights across here for power, caps and shift lock, function keys speaker grill and two cartridge slots there. If we look at the ports on the back, just rotate this around. So this computer was primarily used in the UK, they did try to release it in America but it was a flop. So the main input lead and the power switch, a UHF connector for connected to your TV, we have monochrome composite video, no it's a BNC connector, not phono type. There is a hardware hack to get colour from this connector. Or you can use the RGB connector which can go straight into a BBC monitor. Or you can make up or buy a uh, SCART lead, which is what I did. And the analog, analog inputs, very nice. RS-423 serial input, cassette connector. So at the time it's typical to use a cassette or floppy drive for loading and saving games. He was very lucky, hard disk, which were known as Winchester disks at the time. And I believe some people do still uh, refer to hard drives as Winchester disks uh, in other countries. We have audio output, and have Econet for uh, networking. However, you have to have the Econet uh, module installed to be able to use it. Let's now look at the ports on the back. So we have auxiliary power connector for connecting to a floppy drive for example. We have disk drive connector, printer, user port for connecting your own circuits, 1 MHz bus and tube for connecting a second processor. Now let's look inside the Master 128. Now if you do buy one of these computers, it's a good idea to have a look inside and check there's nothing damaged or somebody might have done a certain modification to it. Up here we have the power supply. This is something that's likely to fail, so a good thing to test before you even power up. But obviously don't do that or look inside unless you really know what you're doing because power supplies are very dangerous. Here of course we have the keyboard. Now on to the left here we have a battery pack. The original idea was that the master was going to use rechargeable batteries but Acorn found that they tended to explode. So instead they installed non-rechargeable battery packs such as this one with a resistor and diode in series to make sure they didn't get charged and explode. Uh, which is a separate issue. But that's the original battery pack which has leaked. So I've made up my own one here with the resistor and diode. Um, I need to secure that down properly. Over here we have the speaker and the two cartridge ports and then we have the uh, main board. So I'm going to point out the main components, I know this is not in the best uh, view. Uh, so we have the CPU over here, we have some ROMs, so I've got two extra ROMs installed. Can't find any information about the software, I'm just going to have to uh, try running them sometime and seeing what they are. Uh, we have the RAM down here, DRAM like so. Uh, the I.O. 6522s are under the keyboard. Uh, we have the real-time clock up here which is backed up by the battery as well as user settings. Uh, that's the other thing if you do buy one of these and the batteries are bad uh, the computer might not even start up so you'll have to reset the computer. There's information on my site about that. Uh, video chip uh, which is here sound which is just under here. Note the sound chip was used in a lot of uh, computers. The sound chip is in 76489. It was used in the master system for example. When I was listening to sounds on the master 
you know, sounds been playing on the Master 1, 2, I was like, this sounds really familiar. Oh, it's also used in the Master System. Oh, okay. Um, and then here and here we have expansion sockets for an internal second processor, because you could have an external second processor or an internal second processor to boost the power of the Master 128. More information about that later in the video. So let's now talk about the BBC Micro Series of Computers. Uh, the British Broadcasting Corporation back in the 80s wanted to catch on with the microprocessor revolution. They wanted to get computers into schools and educate people on them. So they got Acorn Computers to develop the BBC Micro Series. This is a BBC Model B, so that predates the master you saw earlier. Uh, the BBC Microcomputer, the first model, was released in 1981. Um, there were a number of different models such as the A, B and B plus with different amounts of RAM and so on. The Raspberry Pi model numbers A, B, B plus are a reference to the BBC Micro model numbers as the Raspberry Pi has a similar aim, you know, to educate people, especially children, into computers, get them back into programming. So there were a number of different models of the BBC Micro ending with the Master. I'm going to show you the Acorn Electron, which was a cut down version of the BBC Micro. So here it is. So it's a much smaller version. There you go. And as I talked about earlier, here's a cartridge. There weren't many cartridge uh, producers, anyone remembers from the cartridge days. They were very expensive. And I'm not even sure they they released a few, I think, uh, cartridges, especially for the BBC Master, but just too expensive to make um, cartridges back and then. So most software came on cassette or floppy. Of course, there's nothing stopping you, um, with the right know-how, making your own cartridges for the Master. And indeed, people have been doing that, so that's very exciting. Uh, by the way, to use cartridges on the Acorn Electron, you had to get an expansion. Uh, which added on to the back of the computer. And it's quite hard to get hold of them. Also, just show you this is what a typical floppy drive looks like. It's absolutely huge. And that's just a single floppy drive. But there you are, it's just a, a brief history of the BBC Micro Series. I do think you should, if you're interested in this kind of thing, have a look at the history of these computers is very very fascinating. I want to talk about how the BBC Master still impacts our lives today. A lot of people are playing Pokemon Go at the moment on their smartphones. Well maybe they wouldn't be able to play Pokemon Go if it wasn't for the BBC Master. How? I'll explain. The thing about the BBC Master was Acorn Computers developed a second processor for it called the ARM processor which stands for Acorn Risk Machine, or later Advanced Risk Machine. They then later developed the Archimedes computer, which was the first computer to properly use an ARM processor rather than just be an add-on processor. But the thing about the ARM processor is that one of the most used processors ever. It's something like 92% of all smartphones use an ARM processor. I've put here down here a selection of typical kind of typical devices you would have in a household. Maybe not Raspberry Pi, but a lot of them have been sold. So I have here a Moto G, second generation. What processor does it use? Well, it uses an ARM Cortex-A7. I have here a Raspberry Pi Model 3. What processor does it use? Well, it uses an ARM Cortex-A53. I have here a Nintendo 3DS, that's the old 3DS, not the new 3DS, but nonetheless it uses an ARM 11 and ARM 9 processor. So you get the point. So how does this differ from other processors in the market and why is the ARM processor used so much? Well, it's all to do with something called a RISC, which is a reduced instruction set computing. Basically the idea is you have a few simple instructions and the overall processor is easier to develop, it uses less power, 
um, and gives off less heat, which is all very important factors for a portable device like a smartphone. The opposite is CISC, complex instruction set computer, which you find in typical desktops and laptops, and it's good for very raw performance. You have a lot of um, instructions, but it makes overall CPU a lot more complicated. So examples are Intel and AMD processors. The thing about the um, ARM stock, and as I said, you need to research it really, the ARM processor was almost discarded. And so, yeah, another company would have probably invented uh, a similar processor, but it was Acorn who did it. And they're today known as ARM Holdings, and that is their legacy. Well, talking about the history of the BBC Micro Series and the ARM processor, I just wanted to show you this article from a British newspaper, the London Evening Standard, and this was um, on the 18th of July of this year, of course. Um, and there's an article about here how a Japanese company, SoftBank, are buying up ARM, uh, ARM, ARM holdings so it's for £24 billion pounds and they're just talking about that in the article and then right to the side of it they have from small acorn to mighty oak the rise and rise of a UK star and it just briefly goes over that British school children who tapped away on a BBC micro in the 1980s unwittingly sowed the seeds of the arms success so there's so and on and it's just got a brief history of it and I, thought, I just thought I'd share that with you because I was reading that on the train and I thought oh that's funny I've just um, got a BBC master and we're going to talk about the history of the arm processor oh and look arm holdings are going to be brought up for 24 billion pounds and there you go we're now going to look at using the BBC master I've got it connected to my TV using a scart lead I made up let's power it up and we're greeted by the start screen and it's telling us it's in basic. So let's type in some keywords. So let's do print, which is to go to the screen by default, not the printer. Hi. Now you might be thinking, why haven't you done print hello world? Well, the E key isn't working. So I need to fix a common fault for the keys to stop working. Probably needs a good, clean, perhaps testy connections with a multimeter. Um, let's try something else. Fortunately, with keywords, you can do a shorthand. So if you've got certain keys not working, that helps. So let's put this into mode two. It's cut off at the top, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, so there's various graphical modes with different resolution and different number of colors. This is mode 2, which has 16 colors. And we can change the colors using the color keyword, spelt the UK way uh, in the UK versions, the BBC Master, and the American way in the American versions. So I do CO2. We have green. Let's do another one. Two, three, which is yellow. So another one. That's blue. Uh, what else can we have? Oops, talked up. Uh, typed down wrong. It's come up with syntax error. Oh, by the way, if you type just like that, you come up with mistakes. It doesn't understand that at all. Right, let's try again. C O full stop five. We have. Uh, that's meant to be magenta and so on, various different colours. You can also change the background colour as well. So, uh, what colour could we do for that? Let's try this. This could be a bit odd. Oh, yeah, look at that. That is strange. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, see if I can just put this back to how it was. And also. We want white text, which is seven. There we go. Let me do CLS, clear screen. Yeah, um, just something else I want to quickly show you. We do this asterisk ROMs. We get a list of all the installed ROMs, which is very nice. As I mentioned earlier, if you do have battery problems and you do ROMs, it will probably come up there, they're all unplugged, but it's registering now, they're all fine, which is good. That's a good way you can see what software is installed. 
And that's just a brief introduction to using BASIC on the BFC Master. I just thought I'd finish off by showing you some software for the BBC Micro. Unfortunately I can't actually show you it working, but I'll just show you the actual cassettes and boxes. We have Caesar the Cat. So this is on cassette. Yeah. Footballer of the Year, BBC Electro version. That's meant to be pronounced PsyQ. That has ooh, two cassettes. Wow. Treasure Hunt. You get the idea about the graphics, you know, it's got to get your imagination going because it doesn't look anything like that um, in game. It's an interesting piece of software, Microbug. The computer tries to guess uh, what creature you're describing. Beachhead. Franklin's Tomb. <laughs> Flight Path 737, these are all cassettes. So conquering Everest for £2.99, what a bargain! Planet Fall, Jump Jet. Oh, yes, you really need this number skill 0 to. 999. Wow. Huh. Look at these titles. Children from Space. Wow. And is that a child from space? Really? This is for BBC Model B. It shows at the bottom. And lastly, a weather station for BBC Model B. Again, I think this is a dual cassette one. Try and get into shot. I'll do that. Yeah, there we go. So that's just a small selection of software. I think I have got some other somewhere. I just wanted to show you that to finish off. Well, thanks for watching. Please subscribe, please like, please comment. Let me know what computers you like, or if you found this video interesting. Maybe some other computers you want me to show you. Well, thanks for watching. That's bye for now. Bye.